All right, hello. So now that we have our system of equations set up, I'm going to walk you through solving our system of three initial value ordinary differential equations uh, on the computer. So if you're here on campus, we would uh, solve these using MATLAB, uh, which we have access to here on campus. Doing things remotely, uh, more than likely, you, you don't have access to MATLAB at home. And so we're going to actually solve this using GNU Octave. Um, GNU Octave is an open source uh, piece of software. Um, but for the purpose of this exercise, you can think of it as essentially being uh, MATLAB. Okay, but I'm going to walk you through how to get that set up um, now. So we are going to use a service called CoCalc. Okay, so if you type CoCalc in your browser, okay, first hit that comes up is CoCalc. So I'm going to click on it, and I'm brought to the CoCalc uh, website. Okay, um, so you can sign in and create an account. There is free account uh, levels that you can create, um, and you know, creating an account allows you to save documents uh, that you can return to. Um, there's also, uh, you know, commercial level accounts you can sign up for. Um, but I'm just going to click Run CoCalc now, so we can get up and, and running pretty quickly. Okay, so the first thing it's going to do is it's going to set up our calculation environment. Uh, and once it does, uh, one of the first choices we're going to have to make is we need to tell it uh, essentially what programming language are, are we going to use. Okay, so this is based on Jupyter Notebooks. Um, so there's lots of different languages you can you can use. Okay, um, what we want to use here is Octave. Okay, so this is GNU Octave, uh, and again, for you know all intents and purposes, you can think of this as as being MATLAB. Okay, cool. Okay, so now I'm, I'm brought to essentially a, a workbook um, in which I could execute, you know, MATLAB or, or GNU Octave commands. Okay, great. All right. Now, the first thing we need to do, though, is we actually need to create a new file because um, we're going to need to create a function uh, to solve this Diffie Q. Okay. Um, and so let's call this, uh, we can call it anything we want, maybe ODE solve. Okay, then it's important given an extension .m. Okay, so if I press return, I'm going to be brought to essentially a text pad in which I can create this this document. Okay, um, now I'm going to take this in two steps. Okay, um, only in that my goal is I want to make a, a code that's that's pretty nice and that we can. Um, if I flash back to my equations real quickly, um, we have a you know five parameters essentially, right? Our initial conditions, uh, S0, I0, and R0. Uh, but then we also have our, our rate constants, right? Our, our constants of, proportion, of proportion, yeah, proportionality, uh, R and gamma, okay? Um, and so, you know, if this were a model that I might be trying to tune, right? You know, R and gamma might be parameters that I would, you know, tune um, until my model uh, fit my uh, observed data, okay? So if I'm trying to solve Diffie Q's um, uh, numerically in MATLAB, okay, the first thing I need to do is create a rate function. I need to create a function that contains um, my system of differential equations. Okay. So the keyword that tells MATLAB uh, that it's a function is, is the function keyword. Okay. So I'm going to type function res, uh, res being the result, is equal to, I'm just going to call it rate, okay, and so, you know, rate, uh, rate of change of my uh, dependent variables with respect to my independent variables. This will have an input of t, my independent variable. Um, second argument will be a vector, um, which will contain my um, dependent variables, okay, which in this case is um, s, uh, i, and r. Okay, so in, in MATLAB though, you know, this is all has to be packaged up into a, a single vector. And then I'm also going to list our model parameters gamma and r. Okay, and we'll come back to how we get that in a second. All right, so now what does the body of this look like? Okay, so I just went to line 11 and tabbed. So MATLAB lines that begin with a, a percentage sign are comments. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to unpack my vector of dependent variables. Okay, so this isn't necessary, um, but I like to try and make my uh, MATLAB code look as, you know, human readable as, as possible. Okay, and so Y is going to be a vector that contains our dependent variables. Okay, and so what I want to do is try and use notation like this, right, S, I, and R. 
Okay, so I'm going to um, define s to be the first element of this vector. Um, I will be the second element. Okay, and then just realize this is um, R, so I'm going to call this one, you know, uh, we'll call it RA for rate. Okay, so R will be the third element. Okay, and that's capital Y. Okay, and after each one of these lines, I put a semicolon so that I suppress the output. Okay. The next step I'm going to do is next. I'm going to calculate um, rates, okay? And by rates, what I mean is I need to calculate DSDT. DSDT would be the range, uh, rate of change of S with respect to T, okay? So DSDT is equal to negative um, RA, okay, this parameter, um, my rate, times S times I. The IDT is equal to R times S times I, okay, and that's RA, minus gamma times I. Okay, good. Then DRDT is equal to gamma times I. Bam, okay. And then finally, we need to pack up the rates, okay? And so res, the variable that I'm going to return, okay, is going to be dsdt semicolon didt semicolon drdt, okay? The use of semicolons is important um, because technically MATLAB's looking for a column vector, uh, not to be confused with a row vector, okay? All right. So, so that's good. So now I have my, my rate um, working right. Okay. Now I want to build up the part that solves. Okay. Um, and so when I solve it, again, I want to allow us to readily change uh, the values of our parameters, which are our initial conditions, um, our rate, um, the, the rate constant, and then uh, gamma. So I'm going to create a new function up top here. Okay. Um, and I'll do res equals to and then I call this function ODE solve, okay, ODE underscore solve, okay, and then um, parameters, we will have S naught, I naught, R naught, and then also our parameters, gamma and RA, okay, and I'll come down here before I forget and end this function. Okay, so now the first thing I need to do is I need to get my parameters gamma and RA to um, our rate function. Okay, and so how we do that is we define what's called an anonymous function. Okay, and so maybe I call this uh, rate two. Okay, and it'll be equal to, okay, at now the only two input variables that I want to remain okay looking down here are going to be t and y okay and this is necessary because the solver we're going to use ODE45 requires a rate function with just two inputs okay so we're going to um, so rate two will have inputs of t and y with that input of t and y I'm going to call rate I'll pass the value of t and y I, I just passed to this anonymous function along with gamma and RA, which are given as inputs up here. Okay. Then once I have that, then I can, I can solve. Okay. Um, and I guess maybe we could even make um, another input, which is, um, say, you know, T final, the, the time I'm, I'm integrating out to. Okay. So um, next, let's solve our uh, ODE. Okay. Um, so, um, yeah, so, so to solve our ODE, we're going to use ODE45. Um, so I just need to make sure before we run it, the only difference here using Octave compared to MATLAB 
um, is we need to you know load the um, ODE solver package. Okay. But okay, the output's going to look like t comma y. Okay, we'll use ODE forty five, which will return a vector of the times at which my function was evaluated. Then a matrix, where in this case column one will be s, then i, and then r, the value of our uh, dependent variables at those corresponding times uh, t. So this would be um, ODE45. I need to give it my rate function, which is rate 2. Okay, We will integrate from a time of 0 to uh, t final, which you specify. Okay, And then in brackets, I need to list my initial conditions, uh, which will be in the same order at which I unpack um, our functions here. So it would be S-naught, I-naught, R-naught. Bam. Okay, um, and then the last thing we want to do is, is generate a plot uh, where we'll plot S, I, and R uh, versus time um, given uh, this set of parameters. Okay, so now plot results. Okay, I'm sorry if I'm talking fast, but hopefully you know, with this recorded, um, you'll be able to uh, rewatch it. Okay, um, so you need to type the whole uh, command hold on uh, so that we can plot multiple sets of data. Then we'll plot. And OK, so what I should probably do is, in the interest of making things more clear, if Y is our matrix, we're going to cut out the first column to be S, second column to be I, third column to be R. Okay. So S would be Y, all rows, first column. So colon comma one, I is Y colon comma two, R would be Y colon comma three. Okay, so then for plot, if we first plot as our X variable time T versus S, okay, um, and then you know we can color it however we want. Okay, dash K, we'll plot that as a black line. Okay, then if we want to plot um, i, we'll do t comma i. Maybe I want to plot that as a red line. Then last, let's plot uh, t comma r. And let's plot that as a blue line. Okay, cool. So let's see, so we plot all of our data. Um, we could add uh, labels if we want. So x label um, will be time. Um, and then we can add the, the units. So within the single quotes, right, if um, this is days, um, this is something I should have looked at before we started solving the problem, what the unit of times um, we were using. But presumably, it's days. Uh, we can change that if need be. Um, and then you know y label, you can give more specifically. Um, but you know that's where you could you know list um, so S I and R should be a uh, number of, of people. Again, I probably should have checked the model first and um, made sure we had a proper label there. Okay, um, but you could put whatever you want in within those single quotes, um, and that'll be listed as our, our Y label. And then very last, I'll add a legend. Okay, and in single quotes, um, the first data set is going to be S. Second will be I, and third will be R. Okay, so I'll list all those. All right, all right. It might seem like a lot, but you just crushed it. All right, this is this is great. Um, and you know, just well, we don't even need to return anything, so I'm just going to leave it um, like that. All right, so this is saved. Okay. And so now to, to go back um, and, and solve it interactively. So there is a shell. We can shell, solve from a, a shell, um, but our scripts don't quite um, work correctly. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this before I forget all this order, although it will appear. I'm going to click on this welcome to cocalc.ipynb. Um, okay, um, this is our, our notebook. Okay. Okay, and you'll see if I click on ODE solve, ODE solve is, is still there. All right, I can just click on, on the tab. Okay. But essentially, um, to get this to run, right, 
I'm just pasting, right? I would type ODE solve. Okay. Now I'm going to press return to add some lines above this, right? Because in order to run it, um, we need to um, you know list or define what our parameters are. So maybe this first time I'm running it, um, let's see, we had said s not of one. Okay. So we can say s not is, is one. Okay. Return i not is two. Whoop, 2e to the negative 6 and r not uh, was r not 0 okay and then we need to give parameters for gamma uh, that was a couple slides down uh, gamma of, we can start with 0 0.003 0 0.03 and r okay I call it ra is um, 0 0.05 okay then you know t final um, is the number of days okay um, so maybe let's call it 360 let's call it one year and see what it looks like okay um, and you know we could add comments here we could we can make this look pretty you could say you know time you know in days all right and we could we could add comments throughout but uh, maybe we'll just leave it at that so then to get it to run okay oh, one important thing I'm needing so uh, just for so just because uh, we are using uh, GNU Octave we need to load our um, the the package that can solve ODEs so that's a PKG load ODE PKG. <laughs> um, so we need to load the um, ODE solver. And now I'm going to cross my fingers and hope that I got this right. So to run it, so enter or return just you know adds a new line. I'm going to do shift uh, then enter. Okay. All right. And so it works. It's just something that looks um, off with my plots. All right. So question is, let's see, let's see if maybe that i value should actually be something like two. Yeah. So if I change uh, i not to two, okay. So um, I think it's just not displaying correctly here because uh, I admittedly don't have a copy of of, of Word or PowerPoint. Um, but if I use something like two instead of two e to the negative six, right? It solves and I get this beautiful plot. Uh, so here's our, our recovered. Okay, so I think it, maybe that needs to be instead of 2, uh, maybe let's do 2e to the positive 6. Okay, so if I do 2e to the positive 6, then go back to the bottom and plus, yeah, press shift return. Uh, so it's really working on the calculation. Okay, maybe I shouldn't have had it work so hard. Okay, if you, um, if you have it go too crazy, you know, we could always click halt. Um, well, let's get, no, I don't want to close the file. Come on. So let's, okay, let's, if I just keep it at two again, two was solvable. All right, come on. <laughs> so two, two was solvable. Let's run it again. All right, so if I just use two, so I just click the stop button, uh, not halt, I click stop. Okay, uh, so uh, there's i as a function of time. The black line was, was the number of uh, susceptible people as a function of time, and then uh, there's the number of our people in our population that have been uh, recovered. Um, and so, you know, you could play around with, with, with our values. So I don't know if i naught's 10 now. I can just change i not up top, press shift return, right, and and there you go. Okay, um, maybe s not should be um, five. Okay, but you know now you can quickly play around with your parameters um, and see essentially what the cause and effect of everything is. Maybe I don't want to integrate out to 360 days. Things just kind of plateau out. So if I go out to 200 days. All right, you know we can essentially zoom in on that. The other way we could zoom in is is by changing our our y-axis limit, but 
um, you might as well just just resolve okay um, but you know just like that you can go ahead and, and put in any values of s naught i naught and r naught that you want uh, in addition to gamma and ra uh, change the days uh, and you can quickly um, you know resolve and, and generate a, a new plot okay uh, hopefully that helps um, we'll be here with you to to get this set up and, and working um, but um, you know that that's it I will also save a copy of, of my M file uh, and I'll link to it on Google Drive. Uh, that way, if you have any issues coding it up, um, so this video will be posted on YouTube. In the description, I'll put a link to a version of this M file that you could just click on and then always just copy and paste um, into here. So if all this is a lot, um, we'll make it so you can copy and paste um, and we'll make the best with what we can do uh, in this virtual uh, environment.